you're sort of making a you're making a, a new transition now, and there's some very like I think important frameworks that you're sharing with us about about that. So can you tell us a little bit about like your current transition now, how you're thinking about that, and some of the the frameworks that are shaping your thought process around this this next step of organization building. So oh, let's acknowledge the transition first. Um, so yes, I, uh, I grew the organization to about 250 members of the engineering organization. That's the 250 you know, ICs, but the, the overall organization, including management, structure, et cetera. Um, and then made the decision to bring in an SVP of engineering who reports directly to our CEO, has management responsibility for the entire engineering organization, and then shifting my role specifically to what, if you're watching, I'll have to say air quotes, you know, for people who aren't watching out a video, but like more CTO things, because CTO is such a fascinating um, title that everyone does it differently. And I think that actually the fact that everyone does it differently is reflective of the kind of thinking that got me there, which is people do it differently because they bring different strengths to the table. And finding the right balance in your organization is probably more important than what any one person will put on paper about what a CTO should be, right? And so um, I, I think when we were talking, I referenced this earlier, I happened to be reading this book maybe a year or two ago at this point um, called The One Thing. When I read books, they tend to inspire new ideas that maybe aren't even the, the thing specifically in the book, although I, I think that the book is great. And there's this concept in the book of a clarifying question, like what is the one thing that I could be doing right now that makes everything else either easier or unnecessary, which is a fantastic question to ask yourself. If you don't ask yourself that question often, please do. So let's just leave that one there. But the the thing that came to me out of that was sort of like bigger picture, you know, what is the one thing that I should be doing for this organization? Like what am I uniquely qualified to do on behalf of the organization to make us successful? And then as soon as you apply the context of your organization and yourself, whoever might be listening to this, your answer is going to be very different from my answer. And that's that's totally okay. That's why people do this job differently. And I think that, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about these rapid growth of organizations and people who adapt and sort of find ways to, to continue to contribute and those who struggle. A lot of that is is being willing to ask, like, how can we be successful as an organization? What do I contribute to that versus... What does the world expect of me based on the title that I've been granted or, you know, however you want to think about it? And so I was really asking that question, like, what is the thing that I am most uniquely qualified to, to do in this organization? And so to apply the Circle CI context, again, we are building products for people like me, right? Like in some grand sort of hand wavy people like me or, or people wearing shoes that I have worn, you know, whatever, however you want to think about that. I've been a software engineer. I've done product management. I've, you know, I've done engineering leadership. So we do different things for each of those, uh, for those folks. And of course, different people have their own organizations, but within our organization, someone who has the executive context, let's say, like understanding of where we're trying to go as an overall business and the personal experience of having lived a huge part of what our customers live every day and try to do uh, puts me in a, in a great position to really connect the dots for folks around exactly that. Where is the market going overall? How do we help enable that, that persona, that user, customer, however you want to think about it, within that market, what are they trying to achieve and how can we help them do that better from my own personal experience? And then and then, how can we support that kind of product experience with the right technical investments, right? And linking all of that together is generally hard, not because, honestly, it takes a special brain, but rather because it's, it's being in the right place, right? Like the, again, the executive context, the business context, the product context, the personal experience, having all those pieces is unique. And I've been in the organization for seven years, right? So I know a lot about this, like this specific Circle CI uh, organization business. And so contrast that to, you know, coming into this organization, having run a team of eight people in the past and looking at the challenges of scaling an organization, 
those are two different sets of problems, really, or can be two different sets of problems. And so saying, you know what, I bet there are people out there that know how to do this and have done it really well in the past and can bring some of that experience and shape that experience by our context. Like, I'm never a big fan of the, I'm just going to execute the playbook that I, you know, that worked somewhere else, but bring a set of those experiences, be better positioned to, to help with that set of challenges and then allow me to focus on something that's much more about the customer and the market and how we meet those needs, right? There's tons of intersections there. We all know that in engineering leadership, but but really that was what led to this, this transition for me. 